Hello and welcome to Rip TV. And with me, as always, is transactional analyst Bob Cook, who's going to be talking about a phenomena that uh, every therapist really should know about, and that is transference. Transference right. and uh, a little bit of the history of it. So, so first of all, Bob, what is transference? Okay, before I answer that, uh, I put it in the TA made simple uh, lexicon, if you like, because um, uh, transference uh, uh, and the concept of transference within transactional analysis has its own history. Mm. So, Eric Byrne, who was really way back before he, uh, you know, uh, thought up TA, if you like, or created transactional analysis, was a, um, a devoutee of Freud. Mm. And of course, in the psychoanalytical literature, transference was where the concept began. And transference, in its essence, of course, is the projection, you know, the projection of uh, uh, another attitudes, thoughts, feelings uh, onto another person. So, for example, a client walks in the door and says, gosh, you remind me when you smile of my mother. Mm. And actually, more than that, I feel like I'm three, my, my three-year-old has come out to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. So we're transferring onto the person through the vehicle of projection. Yes. An earlier image, an earlier feeling, an earlier thought onto the other person. So we're not actually seeing the other person. Mm. We're seeing a version of our earlier history in terms of our mother in this case. Yes. And, and yes. What, 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 can, what can happen with, with transference? What, what are the, the kind of chasms that people can fall down? Oh, fall down rather than the positive side of transference. Yes. Okay. Now, we've got what is called negative transference or the term negative transference. When, uh, and a really good example of this is, and I don't want to get too far away from TO Made Simple, but yes. a good, good example of this is that when I um, was in my training at the Minster Stand in London, I was about 37, in object relations, uh, a quite well-known um, analyst, or she wrote a book on object relations called uh, Lavina Gomez, asked me if I would like to lie on the couch. Oh, right, okay. An like analytical couch as an experiment for about three or four minutes. Uh, so I, I laid on the couch, and she, of course, uh, was behind me, keeping out of the field, very different from the co-created relational yes. process of today. And within about two minutes, I'd gone very quickly into paranoia, and I transferred my terrible, uh, evil um, mother onto this very kindly woman, actually, in reality. And I started to regress, and um, I felt very unprotected, and also started to experience... Uh, feelings um, uh, of negativity and uh, fear, which came from another time zone altogether. And so in, in, from that frame, I was unable to be the age I was to actually take and, you know, be in the resources of today. So I ended up infantilized and regressed. And that was in two minutes. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and of course, what you're explaining there is, is that classic Freudian psycho psychoanalysis i think it was dora freud's uh yeah. freud, uh, dora he, one of his patients the, the way he termed the phrase mm. what, what you're talking about there is is that is the therapist not trying to build at any level a therapeutic relationship right. but just a professional onlooker who is mm. just literally observing and analyzing mm. and uh and uh, what can happen is is that people I go back in time. They they come in, regress, and in your case, you went back to a child place, a different time zone, a different a different reality. Um, and I think that's really that stepping out of the field. I yeah. think it's an important thing to mention because when people are in the field, then then they can use the quality of the relationship to sustain and support right. someone, can't we? Yeah. What happened to me is for that two minutes, I re-experienced earlier trauma. Mm. that I actually uh, had been been part of um, or 50 or however many years ago it was at that time. Uh, and thank God I, um, she stopped the experiment and uh, grounded me in today's reality because I was actually, through that regression, um, feeling and experiencing the same, or reliving the same trauma that I experienced all those years ago, negatively. Yes. 
That's a bit negatively. Negatively. So that's that's the negative side of transfers. So in terms of in terms of TA, uh, we were talking earlier about Burn actually uh, allegedly uh, apocryphally saying that he didn't use that term. How does it work in transactional analysis? Well, okay, very very quickly. Yeah. From sixty two sixty three, he he did say that we'll not use that word. We'll use the word in awareness and and out of awareness. Yes. That we are either in, you know, in awareness in the here and now, or we go out of awareness instead of the word transference. Mm. So though transference did, did exist, his major focus was to strengthen the adult ego state. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and not to get caught up in uh, long winded psychotherapy processes where transference was analyzed and taken apart as a way of a way of um, getting back to regressive functions. He wanted to strengthen the adult ego state and he used TA words like games and script rather than these transferential words um, which were bounded at the day from the psychoanalytical literature. So he, he, he used the early TA to concentrate on strengthening the adult ego state and uh, invent new language, if you like, like games and scripts and rackets rather than the um, psychoanalytical language of the day around transfers. I think that's a, that's a real separation, isn't it, from Burns work and Freud. Freud mm. would, would have relished the regression and the movement back into a, a past existence mm. as a way of, 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 a way of the expert analysing uh, what was happening to the patient, where mm. Byrne was more interested in keeping the person in the here and now. The adults yeah. now, yeah, correct, and not, and he encouraged his early TA therapists who followed the classical school, these classical ideas, to to not caught up, get caught up in the transference and go back into the child ego state, but to stay in in the here and now, a bit like CBT therapy of today. Yes, so transference wasn't used by the early TA therapists, and that's the point I want to make. And so if we get to, to where we are today in 2019 yep the training yep. the training is very different the training is very very different we have a book in 2007 by 2008 by helena hargill and charlotte sills called relational transaction analysis which is basically about how we can use the transference in the here and now and rework the transference for the sake of positive change with our clients. Very different yes. from the ideas of Burn 50 years ago. Yes, yeah, so it's almost engaging with the transference where it's at. Yeah, use but, it. And calling it out, you know, saying something like, I remind you, you know, the client says, you remind me of my father, and you, the, the therapist saying, I'm not, I'm, well, I, I hear that, but I'm not your father. Yeah, correct. Uh, and you're not eight. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the relational TA therapists of today would use transference in a very different way. Mm. Uh, and in fact, as I said, the early Bernian classical therapists would be encouraged not to think in transferential terms. Mm. What a difference between yeah. the two types of TA therapists. It's interesting, isn't it? If you, if you think of the classic Freudian, someone who encouraged the transference so that they could get, they could in theory get to the root of where the neurosis was, the Bernian idea of transference, which was to to, to try and get the per into the here and now, yeah, and then, to... yeah, and then and then the relational turn, Hagen Dag and Hag I can never pronounce the name. Hagen like the ice cream. Hagen and Sills, yeah. Hagen and Sills to actually meet the meet the meet it head on, That's and and talk about it and say I see that, but actually this the reality is. In the now, I'm not, and you're not. <laughs> and also, uh, another TA aspect of modern TA therapists is to name countertransference and to use it as well. Right. To talk about what you know, what might be happening for themselves in the co-created relationship, and to use transference and the countertransference in a positive way in the here and now again. Yes. In the service of the client which is completely different from Burns' classical ideas of TA. It's amazing, isn't it, how just one idea 
a phenomena that that exists and we exist it's worth it's worth thinking about it doesn't exist only in the therapy room it exists everywhere in our life everywhere we go we are amongst transference and counter transference yeah, uh, yeah projection yeah 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 it's absolutely fascinating so bob cook as always a, what a wonderful um explanation ta made simple as you alluded to earlier on the the fact that it's about this, this little series is about making TA as straightforward as possible. And uh, I wonder, Bob, what, uh, what is going to be the next, the topic of the next? Uh, well, I can tell you now. I was thinking about it. So I'm either going to be uh, a TA concept by Byrne, which yeah. is talked about enough as far as I'm concerned, um, which is called script backlash. Ooh. So transaction analysis and the concept of script backlash. Is probably going to be the next one. So you've heard it here first, folks. If you tune in again to the next episode, um, you'll you'll find another piece of TA theory explained in straightforward and easy to understand way. And also, if you've just seen this video in its as a singular video, click on the um, click on the, the video and the playlist, and you'll see all the other videos where Bob explains the entire span of transactional analysis from the, the structural model, parents, adult, child, right through to all the other theories. It's a, it's a goldmine and a treasure of TA knowledge. And of course, it's all free here on YouTube. And as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. Thank you, Roy.